But the war is also having an impact on all of us. For a while, energy prices jumped to levels higher than we had ever seen before. Around the world, production costs and consumer prices exploded. Many people fear that coal and oil will make a lasting comeback all across the world. If that were to happen, the 1.5 degree target would become meaningless. Our supply chains must be adopted to new geopolitical realities. Realities that you called a messy patchwork of powers in your speech yesterday, Klaus. And over all of this hangs a sword of Damocles, the danger of a new fragmentation of the world of deglobalization and decoupling. And yet, ladies and gentlemen, this is just one part of the story of last year, just one part of the reality that we are looking at here in Davos. The other part of the story is this. Russia has already failed completely in reaching its imperialist goals. Ukraine is defending itself with great success and impressive courage. A broad international alliance led by the G7 is providing the country with financial, economic, humanitarian and military support. Germany alone made available over 12 billion euro last year and we will continue to support Ukraine for as long as necessary. In Berlin, in Berlin at the end of October, we worked with international experts to draw up a Marshall Plan for the long-term reconstruction of Ukraine. A platform of major donors is coordinating the process and in consultation with Ukraine, ensuring that it is well implemented. Private sector capital will play a key role here. I know that many companies in Germany and beyond are very aware of the opportunities that the Ukrainian economic miracle could offer to them, particularly as the country moves toward the European Union after the end of the war. But in order for the war to end, Russia's aggression must fail. That is why we are continuously supplying Ukraine with large quantities of arms in close consultation with our partners. This includes air defense systems like IRIS-T or Patriot, artillery and armored infantry fighting vehicles marking a profound turning point in German foreign and security policy. And there's another part to the story of last year. Within a few months, Germany made itself completely independent from Russian gas, Russian oil, and Russian coal. We concluded new partnerships in Asia, Africa, and America, thus lessening our dependence. And so I can say that our energy supply for this winter is secure. Thanks to well-filled storage facilities, thanks to improved energy efficiency, thanks to remarkable solidarity within Europe, and thanks to the readiness of our companies and of millions of citizens to save energy. As a result, energy prices have recently seen a huge stop and drop. Our measures to reduce the burden on private citizens, companies and businesses are working. Inflation is falling slowly thanks, incidentally, also to resolute moves by the central banks. Industrial production, production in Germany has remained stable over the past few months against all the odds. Our employment rate is at record levels and has recently increased even further. Most importantly, our transformation toward a climate-neutral economy, the fundamental task of our century, is currently taking on an entirely new dynamic. Not in spite of, but because of the Russian war and the resulting pressure on us Europeans to change. Whether you are a business leader or a climate activist, a secu security policy specialist or an investor, it is now crystal clear to each and every one of us that the future belongs solely 
to renewables. For cost reasons, for environmental reasons, for security reasons, and because in the long run, renewables promise the best returns. So yes, the past year brought fundamental change for Germany and Europe. But Germany itself has fundamentally changed as well. We are resolutely pushing forward with the decarbonization of our industry. We want to be climate neutral by 2045, and at the same time, we will remain a country with a strong manufacturing sector. And despite all the difficulties this past year showed us, we can and we will succeed in that. In less than seven months, we built up an entirely new import infrastructure for LNG in Wilhelmshaven. In the future, it can also be used for hydrogen. Just last Saturday, I opened our second LNG terminal within just a few weeks in Lubmin. The day after tomorrow, another terminal ship is expected to arrive at the port of Brunsbüttel. More will follow. This is not only good news for our energy security and that of our European neighbors who will be receiving gas from these terminals. Above all, it shows Germany can be flexible, we can be unbureaucratic, and we can be fast. I spoke of a new Deutschlandgeschwindigkeit in this regard, a new German speed. We will make this German speed the benchmark also for the transformation of the economy as a whole. Your companies can hold on us to this standard. A new law mandates that the expansion of wind power, solar energy, as well as electricity and hydrogen networks now take priority. We will make available no less than 2% of our country for wind power with a minimum of red tape. We have streamlined our processes so that approvals for electricity grids, to name just one example, are granted on average two years faster than before. And we intend to step up the pace even more. You can also rely on our targets. The obstacles have been swept aside. For 2023, we have more than doubled the volume of calls for tender for onshore wind farms alone. By the year 2030, 80% of our electricity production will come from renewable sources, again double what it is at present. At the same time, our electricity requirements are increasing from 600 terawatt hours today to 750 by the end of the decade. And we are expecting them to double yet again in the 2030s. This is a massive increase. That is why the Federal Network Agency has been given a clear mandate to prepare and expand our electricity grids accordingly. We will regularly review the progress made. If it's not on schedule, the measures will be adjusted. However, electricity alone is not enough to run Germany's industry. I'm thinking, for instance, of steel production. Hydrogen will play a decisive role there. And that is not a far-off scenario. Last fall, ThyssenKrupp gave the green light to build a direct reduction plant for low-carbon premium steel. With a capacity of 2.5 million metric tons, the plant will save 3.5 million metric tons of CO2 per year. This is just one example of Europe's strength and innovation. Europe is the world's number one in hydrogen patents, and one in ten global applications comes from Germany. The first supply chains for green hydrogen are currently being built up in our country. For our own production, we are using offshore wind in the North Sea. In parallel, we are concluding hydrogen partnerships worldwide. 